Welcome to Kupiškis, a small, cute district surrounding Lievo River Valley. You will find Kupiškis district municipality in Aukštetyje region in the northeast of Lithuania. Kupiškis is quite far for those who are traveling from Vilnius or Kaunas with a two-hour drive from each. And the population of Kupiškis district reaches only around 16,000. The district capital Kupiškis was established in the 15th century and its cute name came from the river Kupa that's crossing the town. Even though there aren't many architectural reminders of the old days in Kupiškis, it is still nice to explore and search for sculptures across the town. Kupiškis is famous for its so-called open-air museum of sculptures, created by Henrikas Orakauskas, Kupiškis-based artist. There are more than 20 of his metal and wooden sculptures situated all around town. The biggest and the most famous one is the Tree of the Baltic World. Created in 2005, the sculpture quickly became the local favorite and the symbol of Kupiškis. There are more of Henrikas Orakauskas sculptures at the main square, which is dedicated to Laurinas Gutsavičius, the all-time most famous Lithuanian architect from 18th century, who grew up in Kupiškis. He built numerous classical-style buildings around Lithuania, including Vilnius Cathedral and the Town Hall. But now, back to Kupiškis. The square is where all the big events happen, and it also has a musical fountain at its center. Nearby is the Kupa River Valley with a park at its side, and right at the riverside near the bridge there is another place for travelers worth stopping. This time it's a bakery, although it's not just any bakery. It is situated inside an old building that used to be a prison. However, today it's one of the coziest places around Kupiškis with some good pastries baked inside. Next on the way there is a small ethnography museum in an old stone building built in 19th century. And at the outskirts of the city there is probably the oldest historical location in Kupiškis. It is the hill fort of Kupiškis. It was inhabited by a Baltic tribe Seeli sometime from 8th until 13th century until First Crusader invasions when the wooden castle was ruined. Near the hill fort there is the place where most of Kupiškis outdoor activities reside. Kupiškis Lagoon, created by building a dam. It is the fourth largest artificial body of water in Lithuania. Although I would say the longest, for it is not so wide, but it is 62 kilometers long. It is the local favorite place to be in the summertime. Here you can try all sorts of water activities during the summer season, from renting a boat to wakeboarding, fishing and kayaking. There also is a beach and a bridge to an island called Oshves Lezhuves, which means the tongue of mother-in-law. Hmm, well, it is long for sure. Almost one kilometer long, this island is actually a dendrological park with more than 50 types of trees and plenty of walking paths and picnic tables. It looks like a great spot to enjoy some nature right next to the town. Meanwhile, outside the town there are plenty of historical places to visit. The most famous in the area is Adomine Manor House at Adomine Village. It was built sometime in the early 19th century in romantic classical style in an unusual shape at the time and beautifully facing a long pond. It is one of the very few wooden manor houses in Lithuania that are well preserved to this day. Much of the interior decor is still left till today as well including the doors, frescoes, tile oven and fireplace. Everything was created by local craftsmen following the style and wishes of the owner. That's why there is something you probably won't find anywhere else in Lithuania. Indian style ceiling painting. Most of the interior hasn't been renovated, leaving the old house spirit alive. The wooden floors are also original from 200 years ago. You can explore the interior as well as try their traditional buns with curd, called pagrabines. They are baked only at the Domina area, with the recipe being handed down generation from generation and is a part of Lithuanian culinary heritage. Another good thing about Adomine Manor House is that tourism center opened there recently, so the manor will be more open to public, with educational programs available as well. Outside there is a pond and the park behind it, that can be reached by walking all the way around the bridge, or with this fun do-it-yourself ferry. The park is a lovely place for a short stroll with some sculptures and a playground for kids. Another manor house is located at Levo River Valley Landscape Reserve. 
Palavena Manor is there for around 400 years. It is not clear when the currently standing building was built, but it seems that it used to be much larger than it is now. Unfortunately, it was bombed during the Second World War, leaving just a small part of the main house and those two towers with a gallery. What is most amazing about this place is that it belonged to one family the whole time since the creation of the manor in 1654. Comare family ruled the estate and the lands around it for 17 generations. However, just as all the other manor houses after the Second World War, it was taken by the Soviet government and all the valuables were gone as well. But even after the collapse of the Soviet Union, a descendant of the last owner came back to the manor and today it is taken care of by Komare family again. Nowadays, this is one of the local favorite venues in the region for weddings and other events. On the other side of the river nearby, there is another example of architectural heritage in Kupiškis. It is Palevin at St. Dominic Church and Monastery Complex. It was built in 17th century in late Baroque style. The monastery was active until 1865 when Tsarist government closed it because the monks were supporting the rebels. After that, the monastery was abandoned and only church was working. Nevertheless, the monastery buildings are reviving as well. There is an ongoing renovation of the whole complex. For example, the granary is already fully renovated and bigger tourist groups can have educational activities there. And the last but not least stop of my trip to Kopiškis district is Adomas Patrauskas Museum in Ogini village. If you are not visiting the ethnography museum inside Kopiškis, then this place is great to get some of that, as well as much more. It is one of those places in the middle of nowhere that can surprise with what it has to offer. Adomas Patrauskas created this museum all by himself back in the 70s, after collecting all sorts of old household items. Not only it has an ethnography collection inside one of the traditional houses, but also a unique wooden tower. It was built by a local craftsman on top of a few large stones. The entrance is through winding stairs in the middle, and inside there are more exhibitions. The museum also has other things to see in the yard, plenty of various wooden sculptures, Adomas Petrauskas house and its yard with interesting decorations, including a fire altar, and the third tree alley dedicated to a writer, Joseph Baltusius. Inside the alley, there is a 40 meters long barefoot path named after one of his books, Parduotos Vasaros, meaning sold out summers. In general, this museum is a nice place to learn this history in a more natural, open surroundings. In the end, it's true that Kupiškis is a small place, but it still has a lot of sites to offer. And to be fair, before I started making this video, I didn't really know much about Kupiškis. I'm glad that I came and explored the Kupiškis and I learned so much about it. Kupiškis is a small, cute place with its own history and traditions. And my last tip about travel is that you can easily combine traveling to Kupiškis with other travels around northern Lithuania, since it doesn't take so much time to explore it. See you in Kupiškis. Thanks for watching.